Arthur Jacobs personally offered me the part of Cornelius on a plane flight back from London. I accepted immediately, intrigued by the technical challenge of acting inside the elaborate ape makeup. I remember Roddy McDowell saying that uh, the trick for acting behind those makeups was to overact with your face, then it would bleed through the makeup. If we didn't keep the appliances moving, uh, they began to look like masks. <laughs> Roddy and I got very used to making them move all the time. We were doing all kinds of crazy little things with our face all the time <laughs> to keep them moving. Zero was played by Kim Hunter, best known for her Academy Award-winning performance as Stella in A Streetcar Named Desire. My agent sent me a copy of the script, wanted to know what I was interested in, should he pursue it. <laughs> and I thought it was fascinating. Eventually it came through and they flew me out to L.A. for the uh, costume tests. So I figured I'd be going to the costume department, right? No, went to John Chambers' department. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it, what we had to go through to get all of that on. It took about five hours the first time. Not only the appliances, but all the other stuff that went with it, the wig. We had fur on, on our hands and had to wear brown nail polish. The only thing that was not covered in some way or another were my eyeballs. We then, you know, did tests in front of camera. People asked me a lot, as an actress, didn't it bother you that they couldn't see you? Well, they saw the character I was playing. That's all I care about. One of the pivotal ape characters in the film was Dr. Zayas, the elder orangutan statesman. Inheriting the role after Edward G. Robinson's departure was the noted Shakespearean stage and screen actor, Morris Evans. People would say, why are you spending all the money on, on the actors? You never see their faces. To be convincing and for the idea to work, we had to have great actors. People weren't expecting for a science fiction picture to find that kind of talent. And I think that was surprising and impressive to audiences. And it certainly lent to the credibility of the piece. But you hear their voices and it's their delivery. And that was the key, unmistakable voices. 